What's up, guys? Zan from Zan Madden YouTube channel. Part two of our free forming streaks tutorial. This one focused solely on zone coverage and also how to throw streaks against zone KOs on the sideline, down the middle, you guys name it. Now, the goal to get this video out was 200 likes on our last video, which was our man coverage streaks tutorial. That is the foundation for this video. So if you guys have not watched that, make sure that you guys go back and do so because we're going to talk about settings. We're going to talk about 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock clock eight o'clock in this video and if that stuff sounds like a different language to you it's all broken down in the first part okay so make sure you guys go back and watch that it's well worth your time so we're going to start off here with no ko okay we're going to talk about our cover three our cover four sideline deep zone logic here so we're going to be talking about the left side right out here i've got jair alexander he's got nothing other than pick artists there's no ko on him the rest of the players on my field have ko's we're going to specifically target that left side corner okay now when it comes to this game uh one of the things you got to understand about deep zones in this game is they have break on ball logic if they're not placed in conflict meaning that if i were to go out and attack this thinking this was cover one man which a lot of players would think this would be a cover one man because it's a single high and you know cover one cover three look very similar basically if you just attack an outside deep zone with a streak and you try to free form it it is going to break on the ball psychically i mean it's gonna do exactly what you see right there but basically this interaction in which you go to throw a streak and the zone coverage will immediately psychically undercut the route and pick it off from underneath this is because your player is not in conflict okay and for those of you that don't know what conflict means basically a outside third is designed to kind of sink inside on an outside receiver playing a streak but also peek into the seam in the event that somebody wanted to throw a streak in the seam so that's why double seams is such a popular throw against cover three is because that throw down the middle if it's not lurked by a crazy linebacker is so popular but placing stress on the outside third in a cover three with two vertical attacking threats is actually the key to attacking zone so when it comes to basically throwing Throwing these balls against zone if I suspect this is a cover three base defense or a defense in which my opponent might be using an outside third on the sideline I will get two receivers vertical the outside receiver usually on a fade and then the slot receiver running a seam and what this does is it turns off the psychic logic and allows me to throw our back shoulder freeform the same way that i would against man-to-man -man coverage i'm gonna a little bit spoil some of the secrets here right now you may notice that from our last video to this video i am using a velocity ability on mcnair he's got a x factor set feet lead for 2 ap i think it's one of the best abilities in the game for the purpose of what i'm teaching here in this video um this doesn't mean that you can't throw the ball with a non on velo quarterback so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put warren moon who i lauded is our you know favorite release in the game and this is going to be great because you know it does work as well but the problem is the game is so x factor heavy and we're going to get to this momentarily that while this throw is viable with warren moon with no velo ability and i could get that out of bounds once you put the actual knockout on the field all of a sudden that psychic break on ball returns and you're gonna need a little bit of zip on your throws to make that happen so just kind of wanted to explain uh my thought process here as it pertains to this so if i were to go ahead and come out in a different formation here tight slot open it's very much the same premise here we got this outside third zone on the far left uh you know i check the ap usually at the start of the game my opponent I do the scroll on it and I see, oh, outside corner doesn't have deep KO. It's going to be a long game on the sideline for them. And then I will literally just run something like this. And you probably, if you've watched me and you don't play on far, think that this is the dumbest thing in the world. But I actually will come out and throw this because I know that I can back shoulder this ball into the X receiver by throwing the free form down and outside to eight o'clock. So again, go back to the man coverage video if you haven't watched the man coverage video this throw is the same as the man-to-man -man coverage video with the primary difference being that i need a second vertically attacking threat because it is in fact a zone coverage okay very very important to remember now if you guys are enjoying today's video please do me the solid the same solid you did in our last video hit that like button it tells youtube that this video is helpful even if you're a player that doesn't want to play on far um this is helpful to somebody out there in the community i just want to ask you one more time 
In fact, let's lay down the gauntlet again and see if you guys can do it. If you guys want to see how I freeform regular routes, I'm talking corners, crossers, post routes, drags, all the routes in the game on far, that's the next step. You've learned how to throw the streaks. What about the other stuff? If this video gets 200 likes, I will drop that video. So let's see if you guys can do that again. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. I'll be uploading it if you guys hit that goal tomorrow. Let's see what happens. Now, the other thing that's really important to remember here with zone coverage is that sometimes if your opponent is not running zone drops, there is the potential for a purple zone to jam up your slots release. Now, one of the reasons I choose the tight open, however, is that purple zones do not jam my slot receivers in this formation, even when they're on default setting. And this allows me to get a free release with both players. And then I can throw my back shoulder throws like you see right there. And we're moving and grooving, okay? So it, it's quite easy to make this throw, um, obviously out of this formation. But let's say that I come out in like a tray formation in which, you know, typically speaking, you're going to get a reroute. So now I've got my concept that I want to run to the far side of the field. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to set up vertical, vertical with Burris and Flowers. Sometimes you'll notice that a purple zone will jam and that may impact the way that this works. Now, fortunately, with a velocity ability, we can still zip this throw all day long. But if I had a non velo quarterback in this particular throw, I don't have enough pepper on that throw to get it to the far sideline. So this is going to be something that can impact you. The good news however is most players tend to set zone drops and the minute that they do that it will immediately take away their chuck animations so uh, you'll be able to get free releases all day long when it comes to this so you'll snap the ball and you'll see your guys just going to fly down the field and all of a sudden you can throw this back shoulder and it's just going to be so easy so this is going to be something that you really don't you don't have to worry too much about when it comes to you know throwing down the field against cover three most players are going to set zone drops and it's going to give you a free release either way okay so so that's kind of where I'm going to leave it off as it pertains base throwing against zone. So the problem now is that, okay, Zan, this is great for regs. You just showed how this free form works on regs because not everybody has KOs everywhere. In Mutt, the reality is everybody on the field has a KO ability and that light up is really problematic. What I want to do here is I want to show you guys a couple of different ways. We're going to have a solve that is velocity based and we're going to have a solve that is uh, no velocity. So regardless of what you guys do personally, you guys are going to be able to make this work. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub back in our uh, corner here. I'm going to make sure I have KOs on both sidelines. Um, and we are going to go to work here. Uh, let's start off with no velo because I think that's going to set the foundation for what we're trying to accomplish. So if I go with no velo, the issue that you're going to notice with this is that even if I pull this particular player with flowers down the seam, this back shoulder ball that I'm going to try to throw is going to get broken on too easily. And the guy can basically pick it off or knock it out. So this is something that is very unfortunate as it pertains to the knockout abilities in this game. Um, and basically, since the knockout meta has come out and been so prevalent with everyone on the field having this, I've had to get creative with out velocity in order to complete a ball like this. So there are a couple of different factors. OK, so the first one is that you will want to use stagger motion or lag motion. We've talked about this here on the channel. Um, basically, when you motion a receiver and snap the ball while they're kind of jogging, they will take a couple of steps to gather themselves before they get up the field on their route. This allows time for whoever is set to get vertical down the field before the second route comes in behind them, okay? So I wanna give you guys a really good example of how this works. So you guys know in Madden, when you motion snap a receiver, he kind of stumbles into the route, orients himself, and then goes up the field. We're basically using this motion to create space by allowing flowers to pull, and then we're back shouldering in behind and making a conservative catch. Now, again, it's very tough. It is very, very tough to make this happen. This is why I'm just kind of telling you guys, it's gonna be so much easier for you you when you use a velocity ability albeit it's not impossible i would actually recommend that you guys throw this sooner kind of let him get behind the purple zone and then throw this down and outside you know obviously right there the user would be that guy so you want to avoid a user but again the whole problem with this concept is that you're drawing attention to this with motion this has been honestly just transparent with you this has been my biggest issue over the course of the last month or so is every single player is now getting deep ko's it's tough it was fine 
line when there was just the safeties and I could attack the outside corner as well. But now it's becoming more of an issue when it comes to attacking the outside corners. Don't worry, we're going to get there with the velo here in a second. Again, with this concept, it, it makes it so much tougher because you're kind of in a spot where you really are, are struggling to, to make this throw consistently just due to a lack of velo. You're getting space, but again, you're seeing the impact of the, the KO ability. So, you know, as it pertains to this type of motion, yeah, it's great. It really truly is. But again, here, you, you have to get, you just don't have enough zip on there. So this is where we're going to say goodbye to Warren Moon, and we're going to say hello to the velocity ability. So I think honestly, just totally being truthful with you i think that velo is the way to go i would probably go velo on a traditional four release i think to me that's kind of the best blend of a quick deep ball release and also being a, a smooth release on the sideline when you want to throw these jet packs i talked yesterday about justin herbert i talked about the warren moon card there isn't a slinger five out there with an affordable velo ability in my opinion so i'm using this air mcnair card that has the x factor so now what i want to do here is i want to show you how this concept looks once we start to use you know the motion and the the same thing you're going to see a big big change in how this works okay so we do this motion snap the ball and now there's not a window you can't break i mean i could throw this ball like bang i mean you see like right there we got some sort of catch hole bug but there's no world in which that is actually going to end up uh being knocked out okay so again i do this little motion snap snap the football kind of let him pull down and outside boom there it is wide open all these little defenses where your opponents are running a deep zone with a ko and then they just got something in the flat they're not mabling you out this is really going to be the best way to go about things okay so i'll show this to you one more time because i've actually got a better way for this to work uh that i want to get into here in just a second um so with this what we're going to do is again we're going to use this little motion and then i'm just going to throw a little eight, eight o'clocker and boom you see like I, the route ability didn't even turn on there was like no chance for it to knock out on that particular play so again just kind of following up or finalizing here on this lag motion or the the follow trail combo vertically you're basically going to throw this the same pass lead it's an eight o'clock pass lead or a four o'clock pass lead depending on left or right i believe i said eight o'clock just a little bit ago i meant down and outside to four o'clock there uh if it were to the left it would be eight o'clock but again this involves motion so the problem with this conceptually is that it just doesn't work as it pertains you know motioning and, and a good user is going to know that motion's coming so that's where our next concept is going to come in and that is going to be the flip streak now you should be no stranger to what the flip streak is uh this is a concept in which if you flip a formation and you put a receiver on a streak while they go behind the line of scrimmage they will run a wheel and this is the best way possible to actually do this against uh you know these deep zone ko's because what you could do is not have to use that lag motion you could snap the ball at the streak let this route follow in behind and then boom back shoulder it and you're gonna throw that on the sideline. Of course, you wanna catch animation right there, but um, I'll, I'll show this again to you. We're flipping it. I know that I wanna do this to right bumper, so I put him on a streak as he hits the left guard, so he goes the correct direction, and he's gonna be able to get down the field with ease. If you guys want to learn how the flip streak works, I actually did a video dedicated solely to this topic. Uh, it's a perfect example of why this channel uses one video to build upon another. I'm giving you guys tools. You guys can implement tips within tips, and this is a really good example of how this works. So again, this guy kind of runs down the field. I'm gonna throw this as a back shoulder and make this catch on the sideline. Now, again, this is probably a better concept to run to the wide side of the field. You know, again, make sure that you're doing your flip streaks to the wide side. It's gonna give you a little bit more freedom on the sideline. So you see here on the sideline, obviously give you a really good example. I'm able to have a little bit more room to throw this as kind of an eight o'clock get my conservative catch, get down. You, you see that he can't get back to it, okay? So really easy stuff here on this. And that's gonna bring me to my final example of how to throw sideline balls against KOs. Um, so the last one that I wanna talk about, and this one's a little bit harder to find, is the stock kind of fade wheels. Um, and this tight open formation, as you guys know, I, I'm kind of the one player in the community that comes out in this every play, and then I audible. There are plays such as slot posts that have this exaggerated outside Side release fade and also plays like verticals that have two of them and these are so good because i can essentially accomplish the same thing as a flip streak or the lag motion slow release up the field back shoulder conservative catch get down easy eight o'clock pass lead 
very simple stuff. And the cool thing about this route is it actually works to the wide side of the field as well. So if you take a look at Burris, the one difference is gonna be that I'm gonna throw this as in down and inside, so an eight o'clock pass lead. And this is gonna allow me to turn around and avoid the KO on that side as well. So the cool thing about this formation is it's got them all over the place. But if you look at formations like empty tray stack, uh, double stack, there's a lot of them. Uh, I think uh, the gun wing stack has these types of routes. You guys can use these outside releases quite easily and this includes against baseline press you know how a lot of guys use baseline press deep zones again you're going to be able to throw these quite easily i mean you see like right here this is this is a simple throw it really it's so easy and again this is going to put your opponents in a spot where they have to run mabel because they can't just rely on a guy baseline and pressed in an outside quarter or in an outside third to make this work uh, again if i want to throw this to the wide side of the field over here on the right with the verticals release um again it's still the same you're pulling with kelsey and then i'm ripping this as a down and inside with burris i mean look how open that is and then I'm juking. I mean, like there's no shot in the world for a KO ability to stop a far free form down. And you're not able to throw the balls far away when you're on near. So again, this is the whole premise of this building up to this video is that you can do more on far than you can ever do on near. Don't get me wrong. Near is great for timing windows if you're good at hitting holes and zones and all kinds of stuff like that. But if you want really want to make stuff shake with this, you can kind of make your own completions and turn routes into throws that you otherwise would not be able to throw. I mean, the last video is a perfect example of a streak really being thrown like a corner or, a, you know, an out route. You know, this is an example of the same, basically throwing these really good leverage balls against zone that's really going to be kind of the part that uh ends up you know changing the game for you so that's going to do it for today's video guys showed you guys how this works in zone in general conflict routes obviously very important velocity going to help you against ko's but this is how i do it this is how i've been doing it if you have any questions comments concerns or complaints drop those down below always want to hear what you guys think about the video and of course if you guys want to see how i'm free forming regular routes not just streaks on far let's hit 200 again make sure you guys hit that like button i'll see you guys then until then this is zan get in the lab and good luck